The time is 6.15. Here is the news edited by Dilini Gunavardhana, read by Victor Raj. Here are the headlines of the local news. A comprehensive government program is implemented to empower women entrepreneurship. A team from the IMF is to visit Sri Lanka in March. The Swiss ambassador highlights that Sri Lanka has embarked on a better path by joining the program of the IMF. The UNFPA Asia-Pacific Regional Director arrives in Sri Lanka. Minister Ali Sabdardas, the high-level summit of the 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council. Foreign News Michelle Obama is considered the top choice to replace President Biden as Democratic candidate for elections. Local News in Detail President Ranil Vikramasinghe underscored the ongoing efforts to nurture female entrepreneurship capable of adapting to the country's economic transformation. The President highlighted the significant role women entrepreneurs can play in the fostering the digital and green economy affirming the government's commitment to supporting the empowerment of the women entrepreneurs. The President made these remarks addressing the Pratibha Abhisheka Women Entrepreneur Award 2023 held at the Colombo Hilton on Tuesday. Hosted by WC, WCIC, this award ceremony honored remarkable female entrepreneurs and aimed to enhance their business and market access. Additionally, women from the SARC region were provi- provided with an opportunity to compete in a specific category. Offering further remarks, the President emphasized the challenging nature of the past few years, noting the economic difficulties faced by everyone, including the business community. State Minister of Finance Sehan Sema Singh said a team from the IMF is to arrive in Sri Lanka for the second wave of the Extended Fund Facility Program, which is to, to begin on the 7th of March. The progress in meeting key communities are the commitments under the IMF supported program is set to be formally assessed in the extent of the second wave of the EFF engagement alongside the forthcoming 2024 Article 4 consultation assigning Sri Lanka's economic health. The IMF had previously said the second wave of the Sri Lanka's $2.9 billion bailout could be completed in the first half of 2024, provided it managed to meet debt restructuring and revenue targets set under the program. The IMF Executive Board had cleared the first review of Sri Lanka's $2.9 billion bailout in December last year, providing about $337 million in funds to help tackle the fallout from the country's worst financial crisis in decades. This news comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Continuing with more local news, the Swiss ambassador to Sri Lanka, Dr. Sri Walt, recently met the Speaker Mahinda Apabewadana at the Parliament. The Speaker explained to Dr. Walt about the future activities of the Parliament during the discussion. The reconciliation in Sri Lanka was also discussed at length. Accordingly, the Speaker pointed out that good harmony has been established in the country and said that the government is working to strengthen its future. He pointed out that a sectoral oversight committee on reconciliation and national unity has also been established in the parliament for the above purpose. The Swiss ambassador inquired about the upcoming elections to be held in in this country. According to the speaker explained that the presidential election will be held in the prescribed manner as legally stated, and the general election will also be held in the relevant time period next year. The Speaker expressed his gratitude for the assistance given by the Swiss government to Sri Lanka to overcome the economic crisis in the past. Dr. Walt pointed out that Sri Lanka has embarked on a better path.
by joining the program of the IMF and said that there has been growth and development in the economy, education, tourism sector as well as infrastructure in Sri Lanka. She further assured that the Swiss government will continue to support Sri Lanka in the future. The United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, Sri Lanka, welcomed Pio Smith, the UNFPA Asia Pacific Regional Director, who arrived in the country for a formal visit. Mr. Smith's visit aims to bolster collaboration with policymakers, government officials, civil society, and key partners to ad- advocate for the rights of women and girls. During his stay, he will also visit grassroots communities to assess their needs firsthand and identify areas of effective UNFPA support. UNFPA Sri Lanka underscores its enduring collaboration with the government of Sri Lanka and diverse stakeholders island-wide during progress in health, education and gender equality, The organization champions comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services, aligning with commitments to the International Conference on Population and Development Agenda. Minister Ali Sabri urged the members of the UN Human Rights Council not to allow short-term political gains or domestic vote bank politics to overtake the work of the Council. In addressing the high-level segment of the 55th session of the Council through a pre-recorded video statement on Tuesday, Minister Sabri highlighted that despite the severe constraints faced by the country, Sri Lanka continued to engage actively and constructively with an extensive array of helpful working methods of the Council that are productive and beneficial to the people. The Foreign Minister also provided an overview of the tangible progress made by the country with regard to the economic recovery, national unity and reconciliation and added that the cornerstone of these recovery lies in pragmatic policy decisions that prioritize the country's welfare over short-term political gains. While stating that the Council's approach to the humanitarian crisis in Gaza will be another litmus test for its credibility. Minister Sabri urged the Council to prioritize depoliticization, constructive dialogue and multilateral cooperation with avoiding double standards. That ends local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddha Lepa Vedamahatmya. A discussion on the energy sector was held between India and Sri Lanka. The Power Secretary of the Sri Lanka, uh, India, Pankhaja Gravel, and the High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka, Santos Jha, took part in this discussion. The sample project of 130 megawatt electric power system, integration program, and other renewable energy projects under way were discussed at length. The discussion took place at the Minister of Power. That ends main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatmya. Moving on to Watchlight, the Education Ministry has instructed all prospective school authorities to refrain from making students participate in strenuous outdoor activities until the 1st of March due to the prevailing high atmospheric temperatures. Accordingly, sports day events, sports practices or any other scheduled outdoor activities are urged to be suspended for the time being. In addition, school administrations are required to comply with the health guidelines issued by the Health Ministry and the Education Ministry. That came to you on Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Headlines first. Mitchell Obama is considered the top choice to replace President Biden as Democratic candidate for elections. It is emphasized that a new technocratic government needs to unify Palestinians. South Korea's fertility rate sinks to record low. 
World News in Detail A survey has found Michelle Obama is the leading choice to replace Joe Biden as the presidential candidate for Democrats. If he drops out of the race, the former first lady emerged as the top alternate to Mr. Biden for the 2024 race, beating Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton amid questions about the president's health and fitness. About 48% of Democratic voters supported finding another candidate to replace Joe Biden before the elections in November, according to a survey released on Monday. Palestine's ambassador to the UK, Hussam Somlot, said Qatar and Egypt could help from a technocratic Palestinian government to take over governance of the occupied West Bank and Gaza. Somlot said all Palestinian political factions, including Hamas, could be consulted in the new government's formation, but it would be strictly technocratic. On Monday, Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Stayas and his government resigned amid re- reform pressures in a move that was seen as a paving way for the potential national unity government. South Korea's demographic crisis has deepened with the release of data showing its birth rate, already the world's lowest, fell to a new record low in 2023. Despite billions of dollars in government schemes designed to persuade families to have more children, reports that South Korea's population had sunk for the fourth straight year came soon after neighboring Japan reported to record decline in its population last year. Along with a record fall in the November in number of the births and the lowest number of marriages since the end of the Second World, World War, the average number of children South Korean women has during her lifetime fell to 0.72 from 0.78 in 2022, a decline of nearly 8%, according to preliminary data from Statistics Korea. To wrap up the world news, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Michelle Obama is considered the top choice to replace President Biden as Democratic candidate for elections. It is emphasized that a new technocratic government needs to unify Palestinians. South Korea's fertility rate sinks to record low. That ends world news. Moving on to development news. In a bid to enhance collaboration and strengthen bilateral relations between Sri Lanka and France, SLASSCOM and the Sri Lankan France Business Council have signed a memorandum of understanding with a central emphasis on the advanced trade facility dating market access and encouraging investment in knowledge and innovation solutions between the two nations. The memorandum encompasses initiatives such as fostering joint ventures, facilitating academic exchanges and bolstering cooperation within this start startup ecosystem. The event showed the presence of the distinguished representatives from both organizations, each of whom brought valuable insights and perspectives to the table. That ends development news. Moving on with sports news. ODIs, three T20s and a series of test matches between the visiting Sri Lanka team and Bangladesh team will be played next month. The first T20 match will will be played on the 4th of next month in Shilat, Bangladesh. That ends the sports news. Go ekatiana you take it life ticket change it to me a meta set in a as for again on the Kapuina Habakarana. You take it to me a meta set in a friendship at a minute. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account NSB I am a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. The 2022 annual report of the Commercial Bank was judged the overall runner-up and joint winner in the banking category at the Sustainability Reporting Awards presented recently by the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. 
The panel of judges noted that the bank has submitted an excellent report which covers all material aspects of its business. That came to you on Business News. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekakiyana youth ekat life ke change ekat niyamita se penna aswa hage na dega puri na hamay karna youth ekat niyamita se penna friendship ekat menna the all new NSB Ethereum Ethereum account NSB I am a plan for your dream. Moving on to economic news. Minister Jeevan Thondaman said Sri Lanka is looking to form a public private partnerships in the water sector specifically to focus on rural water supply he further added that a water tariff formula which will be reviewed annually or by annually has been formulated and will be submitted to the cabinet parliament and the cope committee that came to you on economic news <laughs> The report. A few showers will occur in the eastern and rural provinces and in the Poland urban mother districts. Showers or thunder showers may occur at several places in the western and suburban provinces and in the Gaul, Mother, and Nuralia districts in the evening or night. Fairly strong winds about 30 to 40 km per hour can be expected at times in eastern slopes of the central hills and in the northern, north central, northwestern, over and eastern provinces and in the Hambantota district. That ends with the report. To wrap up the evening news bulletin on Radio Sri Lanka, let's take a look at the headlines once again. A comprehensive government program is implemented to empower women entrepreneurship. A team from the IMF is to visit Sri Lanka in March. The Swiss ambassador highlights that Sri Lanka has embarked on a better path to join the program of the IMF. The UNFPA Asia-Pacific Regional Director arrives in Sri Lanka. Minister Ali Sabri addresses the high-level segment of the 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council. Foreign news, Michelle Obama is considered the top choice to replace President Biden as Democratic candidate for elections. With that, we wrap up the evening news on Radio Sri Lanka. Back to my good friend and yours, Ramesh Paris. Thank you, Victor. And that was Victor Raj with this evening's news bulletin. And may I take this opportunity to wish you a pleasant evening and have a safe journey back home. The time is coming up to uh, 32 minutes past 6 o'clock. And now we now broadcast a speech delivered by His Excellency President Ranil Vikramasinghe at the Pratibha Abhisheka Women's Entrepreneur Awards 2023 held yesterday in Colombo. I must also commend all those who took part, because this last year was not an easy year. The last three, four years has been difficult for all, for all businesses. And I must commend the women entrepreneurs who thought, who made up their mind to go through it. This year will be about the first year with positive growth, four years. We've had a drop in our GDPs, we have gone down as much as 7%. And we have not yet come to the GDP of 2018. That will take another year or two. These, we just turned the corner in the last two quarters of last year. This is the first year we expect positive growth. It has not been easy. It has been difficult. We had to make many adjustments. We were living beyond our means. And all of you in business know what happens. So now we have to live within our means. Which means that we cannot print money or borrow from the banks. So the only option then was to raise revenue. And that was a difficult period to put the VAT increase it in January, which is the most difficult year. But it is paying its way, it's paying rewards, because our whole intention is to strengthen the rupee and certainly drop the rate of inflation and therefore the rate of interest. So we will have to travel on this. There is no going back to the old period. We have to build a new economy. We have to undergo economic transfer, uh, transformation, which means we are leaner, but we are also meaner. And we also have to become highly competitive and export-oriented. So it's in this atmosphere, in this background, that we have competed and succeeded. But in this period, 
there were also many who lost out and we can help we must help all those who are uh, capable of rising again this is why we've declared a moratorium on parat execution till end of the year let's see what we can do and how all your associations can help the members but this is since it's a new economy it's a new beginning we want to see many more women entrepreneurs in fact we want to see many more women in the workforce we haven't actually we can't be satisfied with the number of women who are in the workforce we have to increase it so your association has a part in it by promoting women entrepreneurs who in turn will have ensure that more women are employed the self employed so uh, the government's policies therefore will be to promote a larger participation of women in the workforce we have to do it as time goes on as our population growth is leveling out the only way that you can increase or sustain your labor force is to ensure that more women participate so these are some of the principles which are guiding us in building a new economy to ensure transformation of the economy a digital economy a green economy ensure we meet our net zero targets it will be a completely different economy but in that there are many ventures which are open to women entrepreneurs small medium and large like to say one is tourism it's booming but we are not doing enough to make it, to ensure that we get the maximum revenue which means we need more people employed in the subsidiary services and even in places where you have your bed and breakfast outfits or not at 5 dollars or 10 dollars we want to ensure that it's at least 50 or 100 dollars you got to train people the government certainly is willing to help so if the women's chamber undertakes a course we will join with you in ensuring more and more women enter the tourist trade in the different fields it's an open one and expansion of tourism means expansion of the food and beverages that's the other so we are also committed to the modernizing of agriculture the process has just started we have a long way to go the first step is in giving freehold title to all those who have land development ordinance permits that is about a million and a half people they own their own land uh, which they cultivate now we are looking at also at the same time at the other end making available may the other plantations which are vested or controlled by the government so that can be developed looking at opening up system a and b of the mahavali zones to give it to farmers who would like to take part includes not only males but also females a lot of agro based industries that will come in including some countries we vast as for land for food security which means bringing in new technology it's not subsistence farming we are about to reorganize our agricultural services improve the delivery system i must say at the moment it's virtually non functional so this is the other area either in agriculture it can also mean high tech agriculture vertical agriculture so these are all means in which we be going ahead so i i think uh, i would ask the association to get come with a program to get more women involved in agricultural enterprises may be micro may be small may be medium may be large but it's an open field it's just it's not merely a question of cultivation it's the whole supply chain and at the end of it can you compete with into the markets of other countries while our population will stay will be stable you have to remember the population in the countries of the indian ocean rim will all increase around us in south asia there may be about 600 million more people not counting those the fact that they are uh, in, they'll have a higher income level so food is one item that we could think of we are looking at education opening up education i don't think countries with billions and billions can all run the education service at the same levels we are a small country so we have time we have time we have 10 15 years to go ahead then the other areas there are many others that are available but i am happy that many of them have engaged in technology a large number has now used technology yes i think uh, that's one area that we want to bring in the new technologies and go in with the digital transformation even to promote ai 
And that's another area in which, with the association, we'll certainly work out programs to help women who get into the field of technology. And I was amazed, and I think so would be the minister, that women are now getting involved in renewable energy, in solar energy. Yes, we should help them. Another area where there's money can be done. And there are, I think, enough women who can participate. I mean, renewable energy is one way in which you can earn money and stay at home. That doesn't mean <laughs> work is there, but it has to be done nearby. The food industry itself. So these are whole new range of industries that are coming in, of other enterprises. There are many more. So we'd like to, uh, we'd like the association, the chamber to join us and see how we can get women, promote women to be more involved in entrepreneurship and also in training people for employment. That's another area. While we do this and we are promoting the economy, promoting more women being involved, we are also looking at the empowerment of women. At the moment, the cabinet has finalized the women's empowerment bill. We have also worked on the gender equality bill. So both those will become law very soon, as far as the women are concerned. And then the gender budgeting bill. That will take a little longer. But those are three bills that are on the way. Outside your area of commerce, of course, we still have to have discussions and finalize the, the new legislation on violence against women, so to modernize the system. So these are some of the areas, while we are, while the government would like to see more and more women participate in uh, the field of enterprise, we will also be bringing around the legislative changes. And I must say, this was done by all of us. I met the women parliamentarians. They have formed what's called the Women's Caucus in Parliament. And I said, these are about women. These are the topics, kindly give me the draft laws. So they sat, they had hearings and they had hearings, that of course is normal. And at the end of it, they have produced the reports. So I must commend all the members of the Women's Caucus, starting from Dr. Fernando Pulle, who irrespective of political parties got together for the betterment of the women. I wish the male leaders will, will also do that. Unfortunately, I've asked them many times, join us. We have to go to a new, we have a new eco economic framework. We can go back. And remember, we have to give assurances to the IMF and about 30 creditors, which we cannot break. You can't go back on it. If you go back on it, they will withdraw the support. So I've been telling them, let's all get together and agree on how we open up the economy. Then it doesn't matter who wins, who loses. The system is the change. Same. And uh, if you want, you can ignore the politicians and go ahead and do your business. But unlike the women MPs, the male MPs have not yet seen census. So I love her to ask uh, Dr. Fernando Pulle and others to go and tell all those leaders, look, we got together, we have resolved the issues. Let's get together and resolve the country's issues. So anyway, I don't want to take any more of your time talking about what the males in the opposition are doing. You see it every day on TV. Nevertheless, I'd like to thank the Chamber for having invited me and wish you all the best in your endeavours. That was a speech delivered by His Excellency President Ranil Vikramasinghe at the Pratibha Abhisheka Women's Entrepreneur Awards 2023 held yesterday in Colombo. You are tuned to Radio Sri Lanka.